What's up everybody? This is David with Average Joe Investing and I was responding to a couple of comments the other day and I realized just how outdated my M1 Finance tutorial is because they actually changed the layout of it about halfway through 2019. So with that being said, I'm going to show you guys kind of the new layout. Hopefully it's the same for all of 2020. That way you guys can see pretty much every single button you could possibly click on and exactly how to use everything in the application. With that being said, let's hop right over into the app. So as soon as you open up the application, this will be the screen you see once you already have an account. If you do not have an account, it'll go right into actually creating one for you. If you already have an account and you want to open up another one, what we're going to do is click the three lines in the top left hand corner and then just simply go down to add account. In here, we're going to see all the different options that M1 Finance offers. So we have an individual investing account that's just simply a taxable account. So that's going to be like what you see with Fidelity. It's something you can get with like Robinhood. This is gonna be long-term, short-term capital gains. You pay your taxes at the end of the year based on your earnings. That's just a normal taxable account. Honestly, what I prefer to use M1 Finance for is actually their retirement accounts. Specifically speaking, their Roth IRA. There's a couple tax advantages going on with the Roth IRA account. A couple of reasons why I personally prefer it. I have separate videos on that. But personally, what I use it for is gonna be the Roth IRA account. But you absolutely have a ton of other options here. You can open up a trust account as well as a joint account. But either way, you're going to select which kind of account you want, go through and fill out all your information. So because this is actually a taxable thing and there is max contributions you can make to an account like a Roth IRA, you are going to have to put in your social security number. So go ahead and make yourself an account. It's pretty self-explanatory. I don't need any more accounts. I don't need to be putting in my personal information here. So I'm just going to hop right up to the next step. So now we've created whichever type of account you want here. The next thing we need to do is actually fund the account. So in order to do that, go right back to your main home screen here. On the bottom, right in the middle, you'll see the M1 Finance logo that says transfers. We're gonna go ahead and click that. On the screen that pops up, if you had anything pending, it would pop up right here. I don't have anything pending, so we're gonna go to move money. And now we have our options here. So you can do a one-time transfer. That is just gonna be simply, say your initial $500 you wanna fund to the account, or six months down the line, you just wanna throw an extra $200 in the account. That's how you would do it. We also have reoccurring transfer. So that's if you want to set up like a schedule. Every other week when you get paid, you want 20 bucks to go into the account. Once a month, you want to add in 50 bucks. That's how you would set that up. Also, we have the account transfer. So if you want to roll over your 401k, you want to move another account over here like your Robinhood account, you can absolutely do everything right through this menu here. So now you have an M1 Finance account and we funded the account as well. The next thing to do is actually building your pie, which is actually what you're going to be investing in. So if you're new to M1 Finance, when you're just on your main home screen, it'll look a little bit different than this. It'll look like what I'm going to show in just a second. If you already have M1 Finance and you want to create a new pie, we can go to research, click the menu in the top left, and then just click my pies. And then we can just hit the little plus sign. So again, if you are new to M1 Finance, your main invest screen should look something like this. This is basically just an empty pie saying, go ahead and create your first one. So we're going to hit the plus sign here. Now, the first thing you're going to see is in the first tab, these are all the different stocks you can invest in, and they are in order in terms of market cap. So all the big guys, there's Apple and Microsoft. If we scroll down a little ways here, we'll find other companies like PepsiCo and Boeing. And then if there's a company you want to invest in that you don't see just by scrolling or you know the market cap's relatively small, we can just type into the search bar. So for example, we were talking about Slack a couple videos back. You just type it in, it'll pop right up. On top of actually having just individual stocks, we can click the funds tab. These are gonna be all of your ETFs. So you don't have to buy just individual stocks, you can buy ETFs as well. And then my favorite part about M1 Finance is actually gonna be the expert pies tab. So if you are a new investor and you're not sure what to invest in, you wanna start saving for retirement, but you really don't know what to jump into, click on expert pies, and then you can click on any of these. So for example, just click on plan for retirement. Now this will tell you when do you plan on retiring? Let's say that we plan on retiring in the year 2050. We click on that. There's an aggressive, a conservative, and a moderate version here. So let's go ahead and just say we're retiring in 2050. We want a conservative profile. Just hit the little plus sign, and you will see that that will actually add up a one up here in the top. So that means that we only have one section to the pie. So if you only have one, obviously just 100% of your money goes into that. This is already very, very diverse. So it's a very, very good investment. If we click on it, It'll actually kind of break down what's in it. So there's 16 holdings. There's your expense ratio, the dividend yield, how much risk there is, 
and how it's performed over the last several years. And that is annualized. So if you see one year return at 23%, you look at five years, you're like, oh, it's only up 8%. It's 8% per year over the last five years. So it's not like all of a sudden, oh man, it's only done good in the last year. They also give you a little bit of an explanation in terms of what they're trying to do with this specific one. So that's just gonna be kind of what you see there. The nice part is, let's say that we do wanna go with a 2050 conservative profile, but maybe you do wanna to start to dabble a little bit. So let's go into regular stocks and let's say that you like Visa and let's say that you're a big fan of Johnson & Johnson. So up at the top, you'll see that we have three parts to the pie. We'll go ahead and just click done here. After you select what you wanna invest in, M1 Finance will automatically just divide it. So I picked three things. It's just gonna divide 100% by the three options. But this is not actually how we wanna invest with this. So we wanted to have the majority of this profile be a retirement account, then maybe just dabble a little bit in other stocks. So you can either use the plus minus here or you can actually click on the percentage. Let's lower this to just 3% of the profile. And then same thing with Visa. We only want 3% of the portfolio to be this. And then that leaves 94% to go into the actual retirement portion. So we'll go ahead and make that 94%. So there we go. Now, obviously you can just make this 100% one of those expert pies. They are developed really, really well. They're very, very good investments. But if you do wanna to start to dabble in other companies, you can do something like this where you have 90% of your portfolio being built into one of these expert pies and then slowly start to dabble in a couple of other things. So for example, if you wanted something like Amazon in here, you could always drop Visa down to 1%, have 2% Amazon. You can kind of mess with it however you want to. You can have up to 100 things in one pie just because you can only use full numbers. So I can't use like half a percent, it has to be full percent. I don't recommend putting 100 things in here. Honestly, most people have under 20 holdings. The majority of it is gonna be into something like an ETF, which basically covers a wide part of the market. So for example, if you get VOO, you have the S&P 500. So you're actually be covering 500 different stocks with that. So you're a lot more diversified and you have a lot less risk in your actual portfolio. So now that we actually have a portfolio made and a pie built, the next thing is actually taking a look at how you're performing. So this is gonna be pretty simple to do. After a day or two, after you set up that pie, M1 Finance will automatically go out there and buy those positions for you. If we take a look right here on your main hub, this will be the account value. So I have $6,700 in this. It'll show you your actual gain. So that's gonna be your dividends plus the actual market gain. And then the percentage underneath that is gonna be what they call a money weighted return. So with money weighted returns, the reason why they actually do that is because when I buy things in my portfolio, I might've bought some VTI a year and a half ago. I might've bought some VTI last week. So it has to kind of take that into account that I've owned some of it longer than other points as well as the price point I bought into might be different. So that's why it's gonna be a money-weighted return and not just a regular, just rate of return like you would see. If you know I put a dollar in and I have a dollar five, it'd be a 5% gain. It's a little bit different when it comes to investing. So they use what they call money-weighted. On the sort option here, we can kind of change how it's actually done. So usually I leave mine on value. You can also do the target percentage, which I've seen some people do, the name of the stock, the ticker symbol. You can kind of sort it any way you want to there. On the right hand side there, we have the time period. So I can show how my portfolio is done in the last day, the last week, month, quarter, year, and all time. Again, I usually just leave mine on all time. Taking a look at actual individual positions, we'll just talk about VTI because it's right here on the top. Uh, the number on the left, 18.1%, that is gonna be how much of my current portfolio is actually made up out of VTI. The 24% next to that is actually my target. So usually your numbers would be much, much closer than this. Usually it'll be like 23.9 and 24. The reason why mine's so far off is because I actually tweaked my pie to be a little bit heavier into ETFs and I haven't actually funded my account since I made that change. So that's why my percentages are off a little bit. I haven't rebalanced things. I haven't added more money so it can actually fluctuate back out. Your numbers will almost always be way, way closer than this. Obviously, if you know you buy into VTI and it goes on a massive run and some of your other portfolio isn't doing so well, the number will definitely fluctuate some, but then as you fund the account more, it'll bounce itself back out. The green number, 195.62, that is the gain out of that $1,219 that I am up. 
So that is gonna be that amount that I've actually gained through VTI. And then the 28.6% is gonna be the money weighted return I've seen from VTI. So actually lagging my portfolio just a little bit here. And then the big 1220, that is how much my portfolio is actually invested in VTI. Scrolling down, we'll click another one just to kind of make this a little more diverse here. So let's just click Apple, for example. And when we're on here, this will actually show you. So the same thing that we kind of saw on the main screen there, 378 is how much money I actually have in Apple stock. If we scroll down a little bit, we'll see how many shares I actually own. So in this portfolio, I only have 1.21 shares of Apple. So obviously not a lot. My actual average cost is only $193. And if we scroll down a little bit, the current price of Apple stock is $310. So up pretty nicely on this position. This is just kind of a nice way to take a look at that. And if we scroll down a little bit further in any one of these individual stocks you can click on, you will see all the news articles you could ever want about Apple. So after we've gone through and clicked on all the individual stocks you want to take a look at, the other thing we can do right from the main menu here is actually swipe right on this screen. And here you'll see another option or a whole nother menu here. So at the top here, we'll have the same thing, time period, how long you want to look at. But this will show you just kind of a little bit of a line graph, how your portfolio has been doing, as well as kind of break things down a little bit for you. So I have my current value, I have my cash flow, we have how much we've made in market gains as well as dividends. So since I've had my M1 account, I've made just under $200 in dividends. And then our money weighted return right there at the bottom. So again, around 29%. And then we will see how much freed up cash I have in the account. So only $6.54. The nice part is M1 Finance, as you deposit money, will constantly be buying into your pies. So a lot of times you will not have a lot of money just sitting on the sidelines. So now we know kind of how to look at a bunch of individual things. Let's say, for example, we are ready to sell out of something or we're ready to make a couple of changes to the account. That's what the Manage Pie button is going to be for. When you click that, the first option is View Details. When we click View Details, this will tell you how many holdings you have in your account. So I have 14 different holdings. The expense ratios. So a lot of ETFs are actually going to have expense ratios. The nice part is a lot of the Vanguard ones have actually been lowered over the last year. And then the dividend yield on your portfolio, mine currently sits around 3%. You can take a look at your targets. This is what you actually want to own in each one of the individual stocks. Not too awful worried about that. Obviously, you can see that from the home page. Going back, we click that Manage Pie button again. This is where we're going to see other options. So I can share Pie. I can just show my friends what I'm working with. The Rebalance button. So just taking a look there on my screen, you'll see JP Morgan Chase. I have 6.5% of my portfolio. I only want 4%. If I clicked rebalance, it would sell off 2.5% of my JP Morgan Chase holdings. And then it would actually go in and buy stocks like in VTI because I was underweight there. So that's what rebalance is going to do. I only recommend using that if you are using a Roth IRA account. If you have a taxable account, don't click that button too often because every single time you do, it is going to be selling shares. It's going to be buying shares. And every single time it does that, it creates another taxable situation. So I highly, highly recommend only using the rebalance button if you are using a Roth IRA account where buying and selling things doesn't matter. Underneath that, we can buy, we can sell. So if you have money just sitting on the sidelines. Also, this is important to point out. So for example, if you want to have money in your Roth IRA account right now, but you don't want to be fully invested just because maybe you don't like what the stock market is, maybe it's too high for you, you think it's going to crash, you can click the sell button here and actually sell out some of your portfolio. So you can just go to sell them out and put in however much we want to sell. You have to turn off auto invest just because if you sold the uh, position in the portfolio, the next time we get to a day trading cycle, basically M1 Finance is going to reinvest it into your portfolio again. So you'd have to turn off auto invest. I just leave it on because personally, I'm not too awful worried about having to sell positions right now. While we're talking about selling things, so if you go to Manage Pie and click Sell, it'll just sell a percentage out of your portfolio. So it'll sell a little bit of Blackstone, a little bit of JP Morgan, a little bit of AT&T. If you want to sell just one specific position, say we want to sell JP Morgan, you can just click on that in the actual portfolio. Click on Manage Slice, and this is where you can actually buy or sell just part of JP Morgan without kind of messing with your whole pie. That is something I forgot to mention in the last video. So very nice to see that. Back on the main part though, Manage Pie, click the wrong button there. The last thing you'll see is edit pie. So if we click on this, this is where you're going to be able to kind of change your percentages. So if we want less Ford, we want more Blackstone, you can kind of make changes there. Also, we have a little plus sign. 
if we go there, this is how you're going to add additional slices to your pie. If you want to get rid of slices in your pie, you can just take it down to 0% and it will say to be removed. Here is 95% of what you're going to need to know here, but let's go over that last 5%. If we click the menu option when we're under invest, so this is one of those things that's a little bit kind of confusing about this app. So in the bottom left, you'll see invest, and then in the bottom right, you'll see research. When you're on those two tabs, it actually changes that main menu in the top left. So let's go over that main menu if you're on the invest tab. If we click it, you'll see your portfolio, which we've already gone over. Activity, which activity is just going to be whatever purchases and whatever sales you've had. So for mine, it's just going to be a bunch of dividends. And then I did have a couple of buys there on December 30th. And then we did get a dividend on December 30th as well. So that's what activity is going to be, just kind of what's going on in the portfolio. Holdings, again, this will show everything that's in your portfolio. One that's kind of a little messed up right now is Blackstone Group. They haven't actually shown your buy-in price in a long time. I'm up really, really big on that position. I don't know if there's a stock split or something that causes that. But again, this is just another way to take a look at that. And if we do click on any of these, it'll be similar to what we've seen before. It'll show your position your cost basis, the value, everything like that. Up next underneath that will be your funding history. So that is just when you've added money to the account, how much you've added, just in case you have any issues there. Bank connection, I'm not gonna click on that because I believe it shows the name of my bank and part of my account number. And then obviously add account, which we've already gone over. Now, if we go over to the research side of things in the bottom right, like I said, that will actually change the portfolio. You will not usually see this. I just didn't X out of that when I was just showing that. Usually when you click on research, this is what you're gonna see. So this is just gonna be all the news you could possibly want. And then you can obviously look for individual stocks. You can get all the news on those individual stocks. But if we click on the menu tab here, we have stocks, funds. So that's just gonna basically bring us to that menu like when we were adding things, where you can see the individual stocks. Same thing with funds. It'll just show you all those individual funds. And the expert pies, if you want to learn more about those, you want to read about those, you can just click here under research and go through those. My pies just shows the pies that we have. And then you do have a watch list. So if you do want to put something on the watch list, kind of track it without buying into it, there is an option to have a watch list as well. That is pretty much everything. The only other two buttons you can really click on here in the top right, you'll see the little person icon. That is going to be a bunch of your account information. I'm not going to click on that because that would give you my name, my phone number, my email address, and everything like that. The little megaphone next to it is all of the notifications or announcements they have going on. So they do have a couple things there, like the January promotion. You can earn up to $2,500 if you transfer your accounts from other brokerages. So pretty nice little advantage there. And then you'll see pretty much every other promotion they have going on. They did open up a second trading window if you do pay for the M1+. Plus. I don't, there's no reason to, honestly. The only other two buttons you can click here, on the bottom they have spend, which is their debit card. Pretty much all of these mobile platforms have this now. I don't use it. Also borrow, if you wanna borrow money to invest with. Again, I think it's kinda of stupid, I would never do that, just because you pay a decent amount of interest on it. So they have the options there, if you're somebody who would use those. Personally, I won't. But overall, that's just about everything you can click on in here, so. There we go. We've updated it to the new 2019-2020 look of M1 Finance. I hope that was helpful for you guys. I've been trying to respond to every single comment I can, trying to help people out, kind of find their way clicking around the application. But I figured, you know what, we should probably make an updated version of it rather than just trying to respond to everybody on the old tutorial and how the application works and show you guys kind of all the new bells and whistles and how the new one works. So if you do have any questions or I did miss anything, absolutely leave it in the comment section down below and i'll get back to you guys as quickly as possible anyways i've been david with average joe investing i'll see you guys all very soon